In this chapter, Sarah, Sarah, Sarah and Abraham get the son. Look at verse 7. And she said, Who would have said unto Abraham that Sarah should have given children suck? For I have borne him a son in his old age. See, God came through, didn't he? Well, keep reading. Verse 8, And the child grew and was weaned, and Abraham made a great feast the same day that Isaac was weaned. And Sarah saw the son of Hagar, the Egyptian, which she had borne unto Abraham, doing what? Mocking. You see that? Paul says that as the son of the bondwoman persecuted him. So when you compare scripture to scripture, the way that Ishmael persecuted Isaac, here it says he mocked him. What we're going to see, you be with us next week because we're going we're to start with these verses in the next session. The way the law, what the law does to you as a grace believer, someone who has trusted the Lord Jesus Christ for their sins, someone whom God has put under the authority of the Apostle Paul and the grace message. When you as a believer try to perform to please God by going under a performance based acceptance system, that's what the law is. And not just the law of Moses, it's anything outside of Paul's epistles. Any doctrine, whether it's James who says faith without works is dead, any doctrine outside of Paul, it's going to mock you. See, the way that he persecuted him, he mocked him. And what the law does to a grace believer's Christian life, it mocks you. That word mock means to laugh at, to ridicule, to play with and jest. And, and if you're a grace believer and you're trying to be under performance to please God, that's what the law does. The law does nothing but bring wrath. God has given his grace, the message of grace through the Apostle Paul, for you to live your Christian life under. And the same way that Isaac was persecuted by Ishmael, and Ishmael mocked Isaac, that's what will happen to you, my friend, when you go outside of Paul's epistles for your doctrine and how to please God. Well, you're in Genesis 21. We just saw in verse 9 that Abraham, uh, Sarah saw the son of Hagar, the Egyptian, which he had born unto Abraham, mocking. Look at the next verse. Wherefore she said unto Abraham, cast out this bondwoman and her son, for the son of this bondwoman shall not be heir with my son, even Isaac. Go back to Galatians. My friend, there in Genesis, Sarah, whose I did was, by the way, for Abraham to have Ishmael with Hagar. Now she sees Hagar's son persecuting and mocking her son. That's what the law would do, my friend, with you as a grace believer trying to perform to please God, okay? When you leave Paul's epistles, the law mocks you and persecutes you. It says you're a sinner. The law just condemns you. God's grace is the thing that gives you power today, the mystery of Christ. Well. Look what the passage says in Galatians 4, verse 29. But as then he that was born after the flesh persecuted or was mocked by him that was born after the spirit, even so it is now. Verse 30, look at that as we conclude this, this session. Nevertheless, what saith the scripture? Cast out the bondwoman and her son, for the son of the bondwoman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman. You see that, my friend? When it comes to the law of Moses, or any other doctrine that's not Pauline doctrine, sound doctrine. The Bible says, cast it out. Get rid of it. Because it's not part of what God has for you today. It's not part of your heavenly inheritance, your inheritance of grace. You be with us in the next session, my friend, because we're going to start in verse 30 and work our way to the, and towards the next, the next chapter. But the law or any doctrine outside of Paul, because by the way, the law is the only other thing, it's only law and grace in the scripture. When you leave the Apostle Paul, it mocks you. It makes your Christian life, what Paul's gonna say in Galatians 5, vain. You will fall from grace. No, my friend, Paul's your apostle. Let me ask you, has anyone ever loved you enough to say, do you know for sure that if you died this moment where you'd spend eternity? My friend, the grace message from God today says that it's not your works, but that it's the cross of Christ. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, died on the cross to pay for your sins. He was buried and he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. You, on the authority of God's word, can trust what his son did. If you believe that and that alone, faith in Christ and his shed blood alone for your sins, 
God will give you eternal life right now. He'll forgive you all your sins, past, present, and future, and give you an eternal inheritance. Now, that's only the grace of God can do that. Israel didn't have that hope. Israel in the future doesn't have that hope. We have that hope today through the grace of God. And my friend, if you are saved today, and if you're tired of religious system, you need to be in a place that rightly divides the word of truth. The Bible is broken down past, present, and future, and you need to rightly divide it according to 2 Timothy 2.15 in your King James Bible. If you don't have that, won't you come out and join us? I'm Ron Knight. Here's my phone number, unlockyourbible.com. You need to be in a place that rightly divides the word of truth, because if you don't, then you will not know where to get your information. People will mix what Paul has to say and what James or what Christ according to the flesh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. They're all different. Today, the Apostle Paul is for you. Well, my friend, we're coming down to the end of our study. So until next time, I'm Ron Knight saying, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen.